morning, everybody. Welcome. Welcome, everybody watching online. We're so happy you've joined us today. I just want to read something to you guys. And this morning, I was really just praying what God had on his heart for us. And this scripture immediately came to my mind. It's in John 7. And I really feel like if you're hungry this morning, God's really going to meet you. So if you're hungry, just close your eyes and just receive this. It's in John 7, 37, it says, On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. And I really believe that's what God has for us this morning. So let's just lift our hands. And Jesus, we just say, we're thirsty, Lord. You said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. This can either be another Sunday morning or you can truly encounter Jesus. So Lord, we thank you. We welcome you in this place. We lift our voice and we thank you for all you've done. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for shedding your blood. We thank you for your matchless love for us, Jesus. We thank you, we look to you as John said, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We praise you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Have your way and move in this place. And I pray this morning you would truly feed the hungry, truly touch those who are desperate for an encounter with you, whether you're watching online or you're here in the room. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen.
so greatly to be praised. I give honor to you, your name, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, honor to your name, Jesus. Oh, for your name is so great and great.
be our prayer today can this be our prayer this morning I really feel that this is a prayer and we can sing this from our hearts this morning and we can ask the Lord we can ask the Lord to bring us to that place of first love you know what it looked like for you. You know what it looked like for you, that place of first love, the purity of that place. So can we just sing this as a church once more this morning and really truly make it your prayer, not just words that we sing, but let's make it our prayer this morning.
We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your love for us, Lord. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for being here with us this morning. We recognize that you are in the room. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. You are holy. You are worthy, Jesus. Open our eyes to see you. Open our eyes to see you. Open our ears to hear. Soften hearts this morning. Soften hearts, Lord. Soften the hardest of hearts this morning that they would see you, Jesus. That they would see you, Jesus. Thank you for freedom. Thank you for freedom today, Lord. Thank you that you will set the captive free today. In Jesus' name. So we love you, we love you, we welcome you, Holy Spirit, to have your way. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Can we just, can we offer him a sacrifice of praise? When we sang that this morning, that we usher him in with praise. Even if your flesh doesn't feel like it, we can offer a sacrifice of praise because he's worthy. You are worthy, Lord. We offer you praise. We offer you thanksgiving. We offer it up to you, Lord. We praise you. You are holy. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. You are righteous. You are worthy. Lord, we give you the highest praise. The highest praise belongs to you and you alone. Forever worthy, King Jesus. Forever worthy, King Jesus. Hallelujah, holy are you, Lord. Holy are you. Can we thank our worship team and our choir? You wanna go back to your seat, just stay in an atmosphere of worship. Jesus is beautiful. He's beautiful. And he wants to talk to many of you today. I want to read from Matthew chapter 6, beginning at verse 25. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will speak, that you will speak this morning. You will speak. It's your word. Your words are life. Your words are life. Your words are spirit and they are life. So speak, Holy Spirit. Let every distraction just just fall. Let every distraction fall. May they hear your words. May we hear your words coming from your mouth, not mine. Thank you, Lord. This is Jesus speaking, and he says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the fields, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. 
And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? See, Jesus is equating here worry to little faith. He goes on and says, therefore do not worry, saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But seek first the kingdom of God. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And I felt this was on the Lord's heart this morning. I had a dream last night. And in the dream, it was like a, a doctor's office, but a big open, big open space. And, and in the office were rows and rows and rows of chairs, like almost like, you know, spiraling as if you would wait in a really long line. But the rows and rows were full of chairs and full of people. And the faces that I saw were downcast. They were hopeless. They were without faith. They look defeated, full of worry. And so I asked the Holy Spirit just to speak because in that dream, I also saw what appeared to be a physician or a doctor and he had a clipboard and he began to go from person to person and he knelt down on his knees right in front of the person with the clipboard said, what's wrong? Why are you worried? What's wrong? What's going on? And each person began to, to tell the doctor, the physician, what was wrong. And it wasn't always physical things. Some were, yes, my body. I'm, I'm sick in my body. But some of them were, I'm, I'm worried about my kids. I'm worried about what's next. I'm worried about the next season of my life. I don't understand. I'm worried that I don't know him one after one but the kindness and the mercy of the doctor got right down right in front of the person and I often see Jesus this way he always speaks to me this way how close he gets how close he gets because he's near right he's near to the brokenhearted he's close and so he got down with every person and he listened and I believe that the Lord is saying, just like he said in the scripture, you do not need to worry. You do not need to worry. Don't you know that there is fullness of life in me? Don't you see how I cared for the birds, how I clothed the lilies? Do you understand your worth? So worthy that he just says, seek me, seek me first, and he'll take care of everything. He will take care of everything when we seek him first. And we don't seek him to get that. But the true rest is found in leaning back into the arms of a Savior who died for you to provide for your every single need. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, right? While we were yet sinners, Christ died. He's saying today, just come, come to me, come to me. If you are weary, if you are heavy laden, if you are burdened, if you are wondering what's next, I feel like some have become so consumed, even from the moment that you wake up in the morning. Sometimes we spend more time in what I'm gonna prepare for dinner than just resting in the intimacy and love of Jesus. 
And he is after that first love. He is after that is all that he wants. So just like that physician went from person to person, that's Jesus here walking in front of each and every one of you saying, just seek me, just seek me, just rest in me, just let me love you, just let me take the burden, just let me take the concern, just let me take all of it. And that is the simplicity of the gospel, that we come just as we are, with our failures, with our faults, with our sin, with our questions, with our doubts, with our worry, and we bring it to Jesus. We bring it to Jesus. He knows. He is well acquainted with every doubt, with every fear, with every concern. And I also felt today that as a church, it has been so beautiful that we could allow our pastors to have a season of rest. But how have we approached moments in his presence in their absence? Have we come complacent? Have we come with the need to be spurred on by our pastors, with the need to follow a person other than Jesus? Why do we come on Sundays? Do we come for the Lord or do we come for people? And if you've become complacent, maybe in these last few weeks, maybe in these last few months, but if you know that that first love, if that burning desire to get into the house of the Lord because I know the King is there, you can bring that to Him too this morning. And it takes one encounter with the living God for Him to reawaken that desire in you, to reawaken that hunger. There is a beautiful king on a cross. With nails in his hands that he took for you. The nails in his feet that he took for you. That crown of thorns on his head. The perfect, beautiful sacrifice. This is not our home. This is not our home. And so we don't need to worry about today or tomorrow. Our citizenship is in heaven. This life is but a vapor. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, we just hear the Holy Spirit just knocking on your heart this morning and inviting you into communion, inviting you back into communion, inviting you to a place to allow the great physician, the great healer, your strong tower, your shield, your strength, your very present help in time of need to allow him to take the burden this morning, to allow him to take the worry I don't know about my job. I don't know how I'm gonna pay the bills. I don't know about my kids. I'm worried. I don't know what's next. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't even know what this afternoon holds, but I wanna find true joy and true rest in the arms of a savior. So if that's you pertaining to this dream specifically, if you're full of worry, would you just lift your hand this morning? Because I believe the Lord is gonna set you free from that once and for all. Thank you, Jesus, for all these hands. I see you all on the balcony as well. If you're here this morning, you can put your hand down and you know that that first love has grown cold. Maybe you've grown complacent over these last few weeks. Maybe you've allowed your walk with the Lord to be dependent on men versus just Jesus. 
Maybe that's your heart cry this morning. Replace the lamp of my first love, that first love place where I was running after you, where there was nothing that got in the way with my intimacy with you, with communion with you. I would sing all day long. I would sing all day long. I would be so aware of your presence. Doubts and worry would come in, but I would be quick to release them because I was so consumed with how much you loved me. And I need that again. I want that again. Maybe you're a student and you're like, man, I've lost it over these few months. It's so simple that you can just say, Jesus, I want that again. I want that first love back where I am infatuated with you and only you. If that's you, would you just lift your hand this morning as well? Thank you, Lord, for all these hands. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you don't know the Lord. Maybe you don't understand what this first love is. But maybe your heart is beating really fast and you're like, I need a savior. I don't know if I close my eyes today and breathe my last breath. I don't know where I would go. I don't know what that looks like for me. You can be sure of your salvation today. You can be 100% sure of your salvation today. Now is the time of salvation. Do not wait till tomorrow if the Lord is knocking at your heart. So if that's you and you're, I need Jesus, I've never given him my life, or maybe I gave him my life a long time ago and I've walked away, but I wanna know. I wanna know when I leave this room today that I'm his. If that's you, would you just lift your hands? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for all these hands. If we can all stand together. And if you lifted your hands for any of those things or you didn't lift your hand, but you know that you need Jesus, you know you need to surrender all to him, would you just come to the altar this morning? And church, could we just receive them? There were many hands. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you're the one that's speaking this morning. We thank you that you're the one that is speaking, that you're the one that has called these ones out because you wanna set them free today. If you're bound by sin as well, if if you're bound by sin and you need freedom from sin, if you need true freedom from sin, you can come to the altar this morning as well and be free of sin. We'll wait for those in the balcony. There's many in the balcony coming, we'll wait for you. There is true freedom in Christ who the sun sets free is free indeed. He breaks the chain. He breaks the chain. It's who he is. It's why he bled and died. We thank you for your blood, Lord. Thank you for your blood, Lord. Thank you for these ones. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for these lives. Thank you for these lives. Yeah, if you guys wanna surround them, the team, if you wanna get around them, if, if while I'm talking you still wanna come, you guys can come, you won't interrupt. See, you didn't hear the voice of, you didn't hear my voice today, but you heard Jesus. Yeah, thank you, they're still coming. Many are still coming. You didn't hear my voice today. You heard the voice of the Lord. And oh, how he loves you. Oh, how Jesus loves you. Would you see him in front of you right now? Just like just like in that dream, would you just, would you just see him right in front of you? Forget who's next to you. Would you see him looking you in the eye? Saying no more worry, no more doubts, no more hopelessness. Cause you're home now and I'm in you, and I'm with you. I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. I'm close to you who are brokenhearted. 
I see you in your sin and I love you and I'm gonna break that thing off of you once and for all. That's what he says to you this morning. And so we're gonna pray together as a church. And you're gonna pray to Jesus who's right in front of you. Say, Lord Jesus, here I am. Thank you for calling my name today. Thank you for seeing me right where I'm at. Thank you for seeing me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you that you love me. Thank you for loving me. Today I receive your love. I receive your love and I'll never doubt it again. And I know that you love me because you gave your life for me. Thank you that you came and lived a perfect life. That you suffered on a cross. That you died for me. That you were buried. But three days later, you rose again for me. You ascended into heaven. And you're seated at the right hand of the Father. And you're coming back again for me. Lord, today I deny myself. I pick up my cross and I'll follow you. I'll follow you all the days of my life. I'll follow you no matter the cost. I'll follow you no matter what it looks like. I'll follow you no matter what others say. I will follow you. Lord, I receive you. Thank you for forgiving my sin. Thank you that I am truly free. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know, I know, I know he's ministering. I know he's ministering to your hearts. I, I feel... loves you, how he loves you. He's a good father. Maybe he didn't have a mother or father. Maybe there's some of you up here you didn't really have a mother or father to affirm you or to walk with you through hard things. Jesus is there. He's a good father. He's caring and he's kind and he's gentle. And he'll walk with you. He's gonna walk with you. He's gonna walk with you if you let him. But you gotta you gotta let him walk with you. <laughs> You just have to let him love you. You just have to keep your heart open to him. 
just got to let him. I just hear him saying, just let me walk with you. Just let me love you. Just let me lead you. So I think our team may have given you pamphlets. You can take those with you. And there is true newness of life and freedom in this moment. It doesn't have to be over and over and over again. But to, to walk this out, we say these every week, not to be redundant because there's safety in it, because the Bible tells us to do these things. And these aren't to burden you with, oh, now I have to do all these things. No, no, no. <laughs> It's, it's really simple. They're really simple things. The first one is, is just prayer. And I'm sure you talk to friends every day. You talk to coworkers or family members. That's all it is with Jesus. You just talk to him every day. Just have communion with Jesus every day. Let him love you. Sometimes we feel like prayer has to be a lot of words. Sometimes prayer is no words. Probably most of the time it's no words. It's just letting him love you. It's letting him speak to you. It's letting him touch the deepest places in your heart. Second is to read, read the scriptures, read the Bible every single day, all of it. Even if you don't understand it, you will because the Holy Spirit will help you. And I always say this, but it's true. Well, the more you read this, the more you love Jesus, the more you see what he did for you. The third is find a church to be a part of because you cannot do this alone. We need each other in these moments, in the, the mountains, in the valleys, we need each other. So find a church. We would, of course, love to have you here if you're from here if you're not find a church that loves Jesus that talks about Jesus that looks like Jesus that loves the word of God and plant yourself there don't just come once in a while really plant yourself in a church the fourth is to be baptized and we do that here as well you can sign up in the lobby but get baptized it's going into the waters letting that old man be cut off of you and coming out in newness of life. If you have not been baptized and you're struggling in sin maybe, get baptized. There's something that happens in the waters of baptism, that cutting off, that dead man dies in the waters and you are raised. Amen. Uh, the next is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're gonna pray that with you in a minute. He's the teacher. He's the comforter. He's in you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. And the next is to be a witness. So just like you heard about Jesus today, that you can go and tell others about Jesus. That you can go tell others what he did for you and believe with them that they'll do it. He'll do it for them as well. So the scripture says you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses. So we're gonna pray that now as a church, not just for these ones, but for everyone in the room. The scripture says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And so if you're up here, maybe you've not been filled with the Holy Spirit. The scripture says we just have to ask. It's the simplicity of just asking him like a child to fill you. So we're gonna pray and you just ask him, you just ask the Lord to fill you this morning. You in your homes, you can just ask him to fill you again this morning. So let's just stretch our hands. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. Jesus, you said it's better that I go because I will leave, give you the Holy Spirit. I will give you the Holy Spirit. So we thank you right now in this moment, Lord, that you would fill us, fill us all with your Holy Spirit again. 
fill us with your Holy Spirit. We need you. How we need you, Jesus. How we need you. So I thank you that today would be a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, a fresh baptism of your Holy Spirit, that they would be witnesses, that we would all be witnesses, Jesus that we wouldn't just let the days go by without telling others of your great love. So would you equip us and empower us, Lord, to preach your gospel to the ends of the earth. Would you use them, Lord, use them to preach your gospel to the ends of the earth, Lord. Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would fill them, that you would fill them to overflowing. Where they are dry, Lord, would you fill us to overflowing? Fill us to overflowing today. May we encounter you afresh. If you're hungry in this moment, just ask him to fill you. Maybe you're not at the altar, but ask him to fill you if you're hungry. Lord, fill us, fill us again with your Holy Spirit. We want more, Lord. We do not wanna leave today the same. We do not wanna leave today the same. We don't wanna just come in and not leave the same. We wanna be touched by you, Jesus. We wanna be touched by you, Lord. Lord, I pray that you seal these ones in your blood, that they would, would never turn away again, never turn away again sin be broken off, any bondage be broken off them today in the name of Jesus, fear be broken off them today in the name of Jesus, worry gone, never to return in the name of Jesus. You hold our days, you hold our future. Lord, we trust you, we trust you, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for what you did here today. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can we really thank the Lord? Can we really thank the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for these lives. Thank you for these lives. Thank you for these lives that you set free, that you set free, Lord. Thank you for these ones that heard your gospel, Lord. Really use them, really use them in Jesus' name. Amen. We just can we welcome them as they go back to their seats. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And we're gonna welcome up. Uh, are we thankful? <laughs> Every time I see this. <laughs> It stirs my heart to thanksgiving for the ones I'm still believing for. May it, may it keep our hearts in faith for the ones that we are still believing for. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're gonna save every family member. Every family member we're believing for. Every one of them will serve you in Jesus' name. All right, well, can we welcome up Blake as he comes to receive the offering this morning. Amen. Yeah, this morning, uh, before I walked in, my heart wasn't all that stirred. And then you come into the house of God and, and you worship, and then you see the gospel in action. And my heart started to stir, and I started to think about uh, even all the way back to when me and my wife first moved here and all the tears we've sunk into the carpet and um, the night that I got healed from migraines in the building and everything the Lord's done in my life and in my heart, and my heart started to stir again. And I started to be so thankful to the Lord. And I think it's so vital that we, that we sow and that we give back to the place that the Lord used to touch us. And I think that's what true honor looks like. And uh, you see it even all the way back in Exodus. It says in uh, Exodus 35, Moses said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, this is the thing that the Lord has commanded. Take from among you a contribution to the Lord. Whoever is of a generous heart, let him bring the Lord's contribution, gold, silver, bronze. He goes on to list all of this stuff and he has the craftsmen come. You skip down to verse 20, it says, then all the congregation of the people of Israel departed from the presence of Moses and they came. Everyone whose heart stirred him and everyone whose spirit moved him and brought the Lord's contribution to be used for the tent of meeting. And you can go through the rest of the passage. It'll say several times uh, about the people that their hearts were moved and that their hearts were stirred. And I was reading and I was like, Lord, 
why were their hearts so moved? And at the end of the passage, it says that the, uh, the skilled craftsmen went to Moses and begged him uh, to tell the people to stop bringing because they had way too much. Now, that would be a good problem to have at Jesus' image this morning. But uh, so I was asking the Lord, like, what, what is this about? And then right before, if you just flip back a page, you know, you see Israel make the golden calf. They betray the Lord. And then you see the Lord restore them back with Moses. They make, they renew the covenant with the tablets. And the Lord comes in a cloud to Moses. And he says, write this. This is, this is my, my proclamation. The Lord, the Lord, merciful and gracious. And so I started to think today. Lord, you've been so merciful and gracious in my life through this house, through this ministry, and all the tears on the carpet, Lord, I remember them all. And Lord, I just want to give to you today my heart's stirring. And so could I just pray today that our hearts would be stirred, Lord. Lord, as we come today and we give to you, I pray that you would stir every heart in the room, Lord, that you would bring to remembrance, Lord, all the good things that you've done here, Lord all of your goodness that you've caused to pass before us, Lord. And I pray that you would bless every giver, every tither this morning, Lord God. Lord, we give without fear, Lord, without fear of lack. Lord, you provide all of our needs. You are gracious and merciful, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you guys are in the room this morning and you need an envelope, just lift up your hand and we'll have an usher there to help you out. And uh, if you're watching by live stream, we'll have a number uh, that you can text or we'll have a QR code you can scan. God bless you guys. We'll be right back.
preparation for Pastor Michael and Jess going away, Pastor Michael did record a video for us because he couldn't, he just couldn't stay away from us for too long. So why don't you uh, welcome Pastor Michael as he has a message for us this morning. It's going to be beautiful. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Uh, while you're sitting there, I am on vacation, and I'm happy about it. This is our first official family vacation in almost five years. I miss you so much. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being so committed. We really felt in our hearts that it was time to create space every year to go on a nice vacation with our family. The Sunday nights begin in 2018 uh, on my birthday, actually, on September 16th. That wasn't even planned. And here we are, five years later, with a thriving, wonderful, blessed church community. The Lord is with us. We love each other. And um, I'm so thankful for all the Lord has done. Uh, We just felt like it was time to create this space, as I said before, on a yearly basis for a healthy rhythm so that we can stand the test of time uh, and finish well. Hopefully you're stuck with me uh, till I'm like 100 years old. So if that's the case, we're going to need to pace ourselves. This has given us uh, such a blessed time to be together as a couple for Jess and I and to be with the children. Um, This is... uh, pretty close to one of Theo's last summers with us. And so we really wanted to take advantage of this. Our board said, you need to be, you know, having consistent uh, yearly rhythmic vacations. And so we love you. Uh, Just because we're resting, it doesn't mean we don't miss you. We deeply miss you and we're thankful for you. I do have a word in my heart. Uh, We're going to continue with the blood of Jesus. And, uh, I feel the Lord's been speaking to our community about this, but first let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for this precious church and your people. Let your glory rest upon us today and speak to us, touch us, fill us, and heal us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Also be praying for my golf game uh, on this vacation. Pray that a double or triple portion comes upon me and that I never lose again uh, on the golf course. That would be, well, actually, I don't lose often, but just pray it never, uh, ever happens. (laughs) All right, let's get into the word. And I'm so grateful for all the souls saved in that that altar call. Thank you, Lord. So I'm going to teach the word and then we'll receive communion. Uh, Actually, the team will serve you communion when we're through with the scriptures. All right, Exodus chapter 12, verses 21 through 28. I've taught on this before, but I'm gonna take a little, a a slightly different angle. I wanna look back down at this text and I'll begin reading here in verse 21. Then Moses called for the elders of, of Israel and said to them, go and take for yourselves Passover lambs, I'm sorry, lambs according to your families and slay the Passover lamb. Okay, who is this speaking of? Take your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Hopefully you have your Bible and I wanna encourage you, get a real Bible. There's something special about holding the precious Bible in our hands. Maybe I know that sounds foreign maybe today, but I just love having this Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, the scripture says, Therefore purge or cleanse or remove out the old leaven. Oh, it's so good. Therefore, purge or remove the old leaven that you may be a new lump since you truly are unleavened. 
Now listen carefully. For indeed, Christ, our Passover lamb, I love that, or our Passover was sacrificed for us. All right, here Paul is calling us to a life of holiness and and calling us to a life that is free of leaven, the leaven of sin, the yeast of sin. And he tells us why. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. So who is the Passover and what is Paul referring to? What scripture? Exodus chapter 12. Remember, the Bible always answers the Bible. And here we see that, 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 that even the, the Apostle Paul is connecting Exodus 12 and the current reception of Jesus as our Passover. So wonderful. All right, let me keep reading. You shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood which is in the basin and apply some of the blood that is in the basin to the lentil and to the two doorposts. I love this. All right, hyssop. What is the scripture speaking of? Go to Psalm 51. I think it's interesting. I think Pastor Benny has been teaching on this as well. And this is on my heart. So I believe that this is something the Lord is wanting us to discover. Okay, Psalm, we'll look at Psalm 51. And I'd like you to look down at verse see verse 7 actually I'm the, I always do this All right, we're going to start with verse 5 behold I was brought forth in iniquity alright and in sin my mother conceived me speaking of our human condition of sin verse 6 behold you desire truth in the inward parts what is that speaking of Truth in the inward parts. Well, number one, it requires the indwelling of the spirit. So beyond us doing something that looks truthful, here the psalmist is calling us to something that actually actually requires the working of God and requires the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, the interior cleansing of the spirit. How is this accomplished? And in the hidden part, you will make me know wisdom. So salvation, Jesus is known in the depths of who we are. Remember, Paul writes, he is wisdom unto us. The Proverbs Proverbs teaches that wisdom is a person because wisdom cries out, wisdom calls out. Verse seven, now, how does this happen? How is this accomplished? Purge me with hyssop. And I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Okay. Here we see this hyssop connection that is found and traced back to Exodus 12. So here we see that hyssop brings cleansing. All right? Now, in the New Testament reality, how are we cleansed? We're cleansed by faith by faith in the Lord Jesus. There's nothing we can do to receive the forgiving work of God. It is a gift, the Bible says, so that nobody can boast. None of us, hopefully, especially if you've been walking with the Lord for a long time, hopefully you become less and less aware of your own ability regarding your salvation and more aware of God's grace. Salvation, the spiritual formation, uh, becoming more and more like Jesus, according to Romans 8, we, we discover while we do cooperate and yield, ultimately, it is the work of God. Amen? So the Bible says, purge me or cleanse me with hyssop. How are we cleansed today? By faith. How is the blood applied in Exodus chapter 12? With hyssop, in the sign of the cross, two doorposts and the lentil. What does that say to us today? It is by faith in the work of Christ crucified 
that brings the cleansing and purging nature of hyssop, the hyssop-like nature of God's movement in us that removes the old leaven. Now, how do we apply the power of the blood? Well, this is very, very important. I'm not sure if you did ask, but I'm glad you asked, even if you didn't. I feel like you asked. All right, now. The scripture says, we're going to turn to the book of Revelation. I really hope this is blessing you. And by the way, we're here uh, on the land where the church will be built. And um, uh, where construction begins very soon. What an amazing, amazing blessing. In fact, we've already broken ground. And I'm sitting here in the beautiful uh, retreat and offices on the property. What, what, what a dream. What, what a blessing. Okay, now, look at Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of the brethren, what does accusation do but th attempt to project onto you what you have not done? Or even if you've done something, whether you do it or not, the devil is after accusing you. So it is to take something and project it onto you by verbalizing it. Okay, and that's not to say that if we do something incorrect, that we shouldn't be corrected. No, 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 no. It is to say, however, that uh, certain conversations can take place where the, the win is not godly sorrow, godly reconciliation, godly forgiveness. Sometimes in certain conversations, somebody views the win as breaking you down and winning the fight. And that's what accusation accomplishes. So here we see the accuser of the brethren, this is verse uh, 10, who accused them before God day and night has been cast down. Uh, how is this dealt with? Listen carefully. And they, who is the they? Us, the saints. And they overcame him, the accuser. How? By the blood of the what? Of the lamb. Here we see that connection again to the Passover lamb. So powerful. Here we see this connection. And how did they overcome by the blood? Let's look. And by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Wow. Okay. Here we see the current reality or fulfillment of hyssop, faith. But how do we apply the blood? By the word of our testimony. Isn't that wonderful? So here we see the connection between speaking and the power of the blood of Jesus. When I was a little boy, as you know, uh, I was raised in the Orthodox uh, tradition. Uh, I think that's beautiful. So grateful for my upbringing and the culture of uh, the spiritual culture, the um, family culture, the reverence, uh, the beauty of the worship, um, the obsession of Christ crucified. And my dad used to pray with me when I was a little boy before we were even we ever responded to the gospel. And the final line of this prayer he used to pray with me was, and may the blood of Jesus protect us all. And you can almost picture uh, the saints from the very beginning, the inception of the church, discovering the power of verbalizing the application of the blood by the hyssop of faith. And notice the blood is connected to the word of our testimony. So it's not just speaking, but what is our testimony? That Christ has overcome, that he, is, that he died, 
was buried and raised again to newness of life. This is the word of our testimony. And that he's ascended, is returning, and has poured out his spirit upon us and will rule and reign in us and among us, and God shall be with his people. So the word of our testimony is the testimony of Christ Jesus. And that testimony must be of the blood. The blood is overcome. Now, in what shape in Exodus 12, as I mentioned earlier, did they apply the blood with hyssop in the sign of the cross? So our faith must be in the power of the cross, in the power of that bloody cross. We have a cross on our platform. Some people don't like that. Um, it's always amazed me as to regarding some of the comments that we'll get for having a cross on a platform. Friends, I want to say this. If the cross is absent uh, from our version of Christianity, it's not Christian. The cross is powerful. And I believe it's a, an actual satanic plot to remove the power from the church. You remove the power of the blood, the power of the cross. All of the sudden now you are exposed to, to judgment and become like the Egyptians. Because it was only the Egyptians that night who did not have the cross across the front door. So the Christians from day one have been marked by the cross, that bloody cross. And so the blood must be uh, applied verbally. I do it every single day, twice a day. And that's something I wanna just quickly talk to you about as, as your pastor. Obviously, I can't make you do it. I have no desire to try to make you do anything. But I do want to invite you into the beauty of applying the blood of Jesus over your families, over your children, uh, over your lives, over your bodies. What do you think you're doing when you receive communion in just a few minutes? You are declaring the Lord's death, he said, until he comes. The scripture says that we declare the Lord's death until he comes when we receive the body and blood of Jesus. So why do we need to declare the Lord's death? Even in our action, it's something we're not real familiar with in the West is the prophetic nature of obedient acts. So as we receive the body and blood of Jesus, we are declaring something, even though it's not coming out of our mouth verbally, it's, it's stating something uh, in the heavens. It's stating something amongst us as God's church. It's stating something to powers of darkness and demonic influence. What is it stating? Again, look at this, the word of our testimony. What is the word of our testimony? The Lord's death. And we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Of course, his resurrection. But the early church never saw a dividing line between mentioning the cross and the resurrection. That's in our modern way of thinking where we like to compartmentalize and break everything up. We love charts and PowerPoints. The early church didn't have charts and, and PowerPoints. I'm sure Carla's glad she didn't live during the early church. I'm not sure what Carla would do without a PowerPoint. And Michelle's color-coded uh, volunteer PowerPoints that I'm so thankful for, by the way. But look, in all honesty, the early church saw the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus as the passion as the continual flow. In fact, it was originally one feast where Pascha, this great passing over, is celebrated in the death, suffering, death, burial, and resurrection that uh, actually begins with the raising of Lazarus and then uh, into Palm Sunday and then this flow, this beautiful season in the Lord. So we must understand the power of declaring the blood the power of declaring uh, the power of the cross. Why would the Lord expect us, think about this, to declare his death until he comes? Because it's powerful. It's more powerful than we could ever imagine. We don't, we don't understand the full range, the full capability of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. You say, why blood? This is how the Lord established it. And in fact, if you study the scriptures, carefully, and specifically if you identify the word lamb 
and affiliate that word with blood, which is the entire reason for the introduction of a lamb in the temple, in the tabernacle, that lambs came to die. And they had to die by the shedding of blood. The life of the lamb was offered via the outpouring of the blood because the life of that flesh is in the blood. So when Jesus says in Psalm 22, I poured my life out, he is speaking of the offering of his life through the shedding of blood. So when you look at the scriptures, you're going to find something. A bloody river that flows from Genesis all the way to Revelation. I just read to you that they overcame. The saints of God overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, which, by the way, is connected to them not loving their lives even unto death. Think about that. They were so convinced of the power of the blood that they were willing to lay their lives down and die. They were willing to spill their blood because their king, their king spilled his. In fact, Tertullian, the great church father, writes, the blood of the saints has become the seed of the church. Huh? So we see in the scriptures that the blood is introduced when the Lord covers them. As I told you a few Sundays ago, Adam and Eve with animal skins, they would have been covered in blood. And then we see that one is coming in Genesis 3 who will destroy the head of the serpent through bruising, the bruising of the heel. Bruising speaks of blood, even internal bruising speaks of internal bleeding. But we know the Lord bled internally and externally from his body. And then we see the introduction of the blood speaking in the Cain and Abel account. It's all very, very powerful. So the blood speaks, it's introduced there. And God identifies the blood. He says, he says to Cain, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the earth. So here we see a focus on the blood. What did Abel's blood cry out? Vengeance, judgment, uh, revenge. And then the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that the blood of Jesus speaks a better word, even better than Abel's. So it doesn't speak revenge, judgment, uh, vengeance. It speaks forgiveness. It speaks acceptance. It speaks love. It speaks protection. It speaks washing. It speaks redemption. It speaks sanctification. It speaks a hedge. It speaks of Pentecost. Remember, they received the body and blood of Jesus in the upper room and the Holy Ghost fell in the same room. It's very, very important to notice. And it was after the Lord's blood was shed. And in the scriptures, you will always see blood on an altar before oil huh? and then always see blood before fire. Before the fire fell, blood had to be offered. So the fire could not fall at Pentecost until the blood of Jesus was offered. So you see the Lord identifying there the power of blood in general in Cain and Abel. You see Noah after the flood building an altar. What would he do on it? Why would In the Bible, you build altars to kill things on them and worship. And by the way, worship is affiliated with the shedding of blood. Understand that. I think we think that they were like a bunch of songwriters there uh, drinking coffee. Let's have a little worship moment. That's not what Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Noah, it's not what the patriarchs did. When it says that they worshiped at an altar, they brought a sacrifice. So Noah offers blood after judgment and God says, I will not curse the earth ever again through, I will not judge the earth, I should say, ever again through what? Through the flood. Uh, it's very powerful. We see blood offered with Jacob. We see blood offered with Isaac. We see blood offered clearly with Moses. We see blood offered, uh, uh, as I said, with Noah. We see blood being a part of the Old Testament culture. Blood offered with David. How about when they returned the ark to the holy city? They sacrificed blood every six steps. This is incredible. They sacrificed an animal. Why? David knew as the priests are carrying the glory 
the glory cannot advance, the presence of God cannot advance to its resting place without a revelation of the blood, without the understanding that Jesus had to come and die. Isn't this wonderful? So powerful. So why am I saying all this? Because you will see this river of blood go through the patriarchs, through the Pentateuch, through the law. I mean, my word, look at the Levitical law. It is filled with blood. Huh? And this isn't morbid. This is God. This is the way he's chosen to interact with his people. This is a life for life type of culture in the spirit. Why am I saying this? Because I want you to learn as a brother, as a sister, uh, as a business owner, as a missionary, as a father, as a mother, as a pastor, I want you to learn the power of the blood of Jesus. And then once that's established, I want you to think about this for a moment, that the devil himself was overcome by those whose testimony was in the blood. And I want that for you. So when you wake up in the morning, I want you to say, Father, I, I ask you to cover me in the blood of Jesus. And some of you might be saying, but the blood of Jesus already accomplished this work. It's not, there's no need for a present uh, understanding of the present application of the blood. Ah, Peter writes regarding the blood, the sprinkling, present tense, the sprinkling of the blood. There's a current reality, a current ministry of the blood of Jesus. And we know that the blood of Jesus is connected with the power of the Spirit. We know that. So we say, Lord, cover me in your holy blood. I plead the blood. Pray that over your children. Pray that over your churches. And I want you to begin now. Let's do it now, right there in your seats. Actually, um, for a moment, I'd like, I'd like you just to stand up. I'd stand up with you, but I'm, I'm on the set. It would mess everything up. But let's just stand. And I want you, if you're with family, to just take your hands and put them on their shoulders. If you're with friends, you're the same. If you're alone, ask somebody if you can do this. Just, I want, join hands maybe or whatever. Just get together now. And I just want you to begin applying the blood of Jesus. Actually, just say, Lord, apply the blood of Jesus over us because we can apply it. The Lord is actually the one who applies the blood. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, let the power of your blood cover every person in that room right now. And all those watching, we plead the power of the blood of Jesus. Cover us and keep us as your own and send the power of your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. I would like uh, Ryan and Carla and, and, and a few more team members to please come up. And, uh, and I'd like our ushers to come forward now, please, serving teams. And in just a few moments, you will come up. You'll be dismissed by row. You will come up with a prayerful heart and come receive the elements, the body and blood of Jesus, and then go back to your seat and receive uh, communion together. I love you so much. God bless you. And I'll see you so soon. Bye-bye. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are, we're going to step into communion now in a few minutes. Um, before we do that, quickly, tonight we are going to have a healing service specifically. So if you know somebody that needs a miracle, if you need a miracle in your body, Bring them here in the room by faith, and we're going to believe God that we are going to see complete healing in people's bodies tonight, completely. So we just want you guys to know that tonight's going to be a special, special service. Are you guys ready to come to the table? What a moment to do it after a message like that. That as we take of the body and the blood of Jesus, that by faith we are truly believing that we are healed and whole. And we are gonna declare, just like Pastor Michael said, we are gonna pro proclaim the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. What are we proclaiming? We proclaim his death, everything that is included in it. The stripes that were on his back, salvation for us, the totality of it. 
soul, body, mind, spirit, and he paid for it all and it is finished. And so we're gonna start and believe now. If you, if you need a miracle in your body, let's start and believe this morning right now as we partake of this. Don't do it alone. Make sure you guys do it with somebody. But just remember that we're at the table with God Almighty, with Yahweh. We're sitting with him in this moment. We're not just sitting with him, we're partaking of him, with him. So it is a big deal. And so I pray that we come to the table by faith as children, knowing that we're sitting with a good father and that he loves us and the needs the, 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 within us, the, the elements that may not be whole within our bodies, he is here to heal us this morning. And so why don't we go uh, row by row and let's take it together as a family in Jesus' name.
are gonna dismiss tonight. We just wanna thank everybody watching online from all over the world. Thank you guys for being just family, extended family. We know you guys tune in. We hear testimonies of what God does week after week through the live stream. And so we are thankful for you guys. We'll see you tonight for a special healing service. Thank you guys uh, for being in the presence of Jesus with us and running after the Lord with us. It's such an honor. But you guys are dismissed. We're gonna invite the uh, prayer groups, prayer leaders up. So if you guys wanna come up, if you guys need prayer, if you guys need someone to agree with, believe God with you, we will have our leaders up here in the front to do that. So God bless you guys. Michael and Jess here. We are standing on the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. Local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just wanna say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that, we believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we wanna invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is gonna do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're gonna show you right now. We wanna take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for His people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus' image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10, 42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into children's church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. 
we have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first-year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. And may millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space on the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named the Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped on this property. May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.